question about um, how he does in which is, uh, his interpretation of, uh, and, uh, of ideology in relation uh, to uh, communist society. That is, uh, whether he thinks uh, that the communist society has a uh, place for ideology, yeah. if not what. And this seems to me, I mean, connected also um, uh, with a more general problem, uh, that is uh, uh, the problem of how you are in fact going to classify ideology in relation to um, Marxism. Uh, that is, uh, that, um, well, one of the simplest, uh, if you like, the crudest, uh, and perhaps the most stupid classification of, of ideology, uh, which, or ideologies which you can have, is that uh, uh, thinking about the orientation of ideology, uh, whether it is oriented towards the past or the present or the future. Uh, I mean, you may have ideologies which justify a certain situation uh, in relation to the past by saying, say, that they, uh, uh, they did must be free because of Gothic freedom. Or you may have, on the contrary, the Pax Romana, uh, which justifies uh, uh, um, a, a certain order in relation to what it gives presently. Or you may have an uh, ideology uh, which uh, is oriented towards the future, in more, more or less in an apocalyptic or neapocalyptic way. And now it seems to me that if you have to take this classification, of course, Marxism <laughs> becomes a, a, a itself an ideology uh, with a future orientation. And uh, what I would rather like to think is whether um, uh, um, uh, uh, then the interpretation of, uh, of Marxism seen as an achieved uh, ideology in the form of communism would take the form uh, of a realized eschatology in, in Christian terms. That, uh, that is, that if you, if you could, could have, I mean, that type of interpretation which is now uh, given <laughs> uh, by uh, the Christian theologians uh, um, to the gospel message. Well, these are questions as you can understand that. I mean, I, I mean, it makes sense only if he is present. I mean, I could go on a bit about that, but uh, what can I do? Is anyone <laughs> prepared to be the Godelier for the purpose of... <laughs> um, would anybody like to take up those remarks? I mean, is it the case that uh, communist societies claim that they have reached the end? I mean, uh, uh, are they? Is the withering of the state about still about to take place? I mean. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Just in time for a rerun. <laughs> <laughs> Questions have been addressed to the case in <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Yeah, well, what it was worse, you see, it was the, beginning. <laughs> the proudest of kings was going to be your ghost. <laughs> like, is it a Shakespearean play? <laughs> Almost, yes. Yeah. Well, right, can I come leave to launch? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I was really... Uh, um, <laughs> uh, I was, I, was, uh, I was really wanted to ask you a very simple question. I mean, how uh, do you envisage uh, the position of ideology in a communist society? And um, I was trying to connect that with uh, two points. First of all, whether you believe uh, that um, uh, um, you can really describe uh, capitalism as uh, uh, the last but one. Mm -hmm. a social form, and B, uh, whether um, uh, you would accept uh, that, I mean, one of the simplest way of classifying ideologies is to classify uh, uh, ideologies according uh, to their orientation, either towards the past or the present or the future, as justification for a certain social order, I mean, the simplest type of or justification about the past would be, I mean, that a certain order in the past, I mean, would justify your order in the present. I mean, for instance, that you, uh, uh, if you had had Gothic liberty in the 
in the remote German past, you are entitled as an Englishman or as a German to certain types of liberties or things like this. Or if you are in the uh, um, oriented towards the present, you would have a situation like that of the Pax Romana, which never tried justification in the past, but just immediately in what it offers in the present. Or you may have, of course, a type of ideology justifying itself uh, in relation to the future that has in, in any more or less apocalyptic or, you know, messianic form. If so, I would describe, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the communist ideology itself, that is the Marxist ideology in any form, as a future-oriented ideology. Now, if you have a, an ideology which is oriented towards the future and which is fulfilled, uh, then you have a situation uh, which um, a theologian now would call uh, all um, realized eschatology. Uh, would you think uh, that uh, uh, a possible interpretation of the function of ideology uh, in, uh, in a communist society would be that of realized eschatology? <laughs> Many questions. But first, I think uh, that in a socialist, I don't know what is a communist uh, society, but a socialist or so-called socialist society, ideology will exist if we define uh, uh, ideology as a sort of uh, a system of uh, representations, uh, spontaneously or not spontaneously developed to deal with the content of social life, the evolution of social life, and also the image of nature, the knowledge of nature. I think, uh, to me, for a long time, maybe for ever, there will be many opposite interests within a socialist society and many reasons why you have an ideology playing with that or representing these opposed interests. Like one of the, you just look around, around us, you know, in Russia and in, and in China. The, de the development of ideology in these countries has never stopped. No? And uh, we cannot expect that everyone in one socialist society will have a scientific uh, or so-called scientific consciousness of social life and nat natural reality. It would be a phantasm. I don't think it is that. The idea is that more of, a, more of a contradiction between peoples and the contradiction of interest, more they disappear, less it will be necessary at, as an objective social function to, to a representation of nature and, real, and social reality which depict nature and social reality as transcendent realities giving a, f a meaning and a, a goal to everyone's life. I mean, I don't think ideology is going to disappear, but I don't think at the same time everyone will have a scientific knowledge of, his, of himself and of society. Uh, look, it is a double position I, I try to explain. It's not easy to, Because I think what will maybe disappear is the idea that the fate of the peoples is commanded by transcendent or imaginary reasons. And so it will be a consciousness of social reality as social reality, or nature as nature without any foreign addition. And so, to me, ideology is not going to disappear. At the same time, probably, the spontaneous or not spontaneous for social forms of consciousness will less and less involve a representation of transcendent reasons for the reality itself, explaining the reality itself. I don't know if I am clear because First, the idea is not simple, and also uh, I am not quite <laughs> fluent in English this morning. I don't know <laughs> why, but I am that. So that is my answer to your question. Now, 
I did not quite under I did not quite understand your your last question about the, the scatologic. Uh, in, in fact, you see, uh, Christianity has found itself uh, in in this problem. They begin to come, you yeah. see, and, uh, and you uh, have to um, uh, uh, to. Uh, well, I feel uh, to define yeah. in a sense, yeah. uh, though um, <laughs> linear endowments that is not entirely come uh, in, uh, exist. You see, that is uh, uh, the, the, there is the other problem uh, uh, which uh, um, they have to face more and more in, in recent times. That uh, if uh, uh, the second advent had not uh, happened, but still you are in Christian society, uh, what is uh, the meaning of a Christian society without having the second advent and the answer of <coughs> which has been invented perhaps uh, uh, in party uh, just here at Cambridge so it's Professor Dorn uh, is there so oh, uh, uh, well, yeah, I, I, I think I even understood yeah. Yeah. yeah but I mean uh, really yeah. leaving aside this uh, uh, the, the main um, uh, um, uh, question which I, I want to ask to you without uh, wishing to simplify either yours either your um, uh, position, uh, no indeed, uh, um, my criticism to you is this, that I had the impression that you were more and more identi identifying ideology with just simply the process uh, of understanding yourself and, and the society in which you are. That is more or less identifying, I'm not saying entirely uh, the um, ideology with the process of thinking altogether, because pro probably you reserve some uh, some space uh, to scientific thinking of some other kind. Uh, but um, um, if you are going uh, uh, to, uh, to say uh, uh, that um, uh, um, uh, ideology will still persist, uh, uh, then um, um, I, I, I'm wondering, I mean, what you mean uh, me, when you, 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 uh, you on, the other, uh, on the other hand, you also state that ideology is fundamentally always a justification or some state of oppression, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also of uh, the uh, acceptance of oppression by the oppressed. Um, how are you going uh, to yes. 